welcome to SWK's Empower Virtual Conference. Uh, it's our customer conference uh, for 2021. And I'm here today to talk to you about the recall process automation for end-to-end -end traceability in Sage X3. Uh, I am Steve Janak, the Director of Solution Architecture here at SWK Technology. Uh, I have over 25 years of process manufacturing industry experience before moving into the tech industry over 10 years ago. Uh, so I've got a little bit of a background in this uh, to be able to talk about it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this full screen, and here we go. So about SWK, uh, you know, we just delight in helping our customers uh, achieve their goals. Uh, our vision is to become a really close partner with you and align our resources and expertise to do the best we can to support your people. Um, we try to develop and, and hold co consultative relationships with our customers because we know it brings long-term mutual success for both of us. Uh, we prove this every day. Uh, we provide free business management consulting uh, through our STAT programs um, and uh, even just from general consulting basis. Um, what we're really here is to help you get the most out of your business technology investments. Um, uh, in other words, we're here uh, as hashtag enable success. Um, our services and solutions, as you know, we offer a wide selection of software solutions. Um, you guys mostly, I think, are from Sage X3, so uh, that's what we're talking about today. Um, but we also do business management consulting related to software and implementation, as well as, as other uh, aspects of business. Um, and we do have network services, too. Uh, we range from hosted solutions, uh, complete managed services, and we off offer IT help desk support as well. In fact, if you have an opportunity to attend one of the MCS Managed Cloud Services uh, sessions during this conference, uh, I advise you do so. I, I think it would be a great opportunity to learn uh, what's out there and what's what's really truly available and how it can best help you. <clears throat> Our agenda today, uh, we're going to be talking about the auto recall basis uh, within Sage X3. So we're going to talk about lot control features and purchasing kits and, and manufacturing work orders. We're going to do a mock recall. We've got a customer complaint scenario we'll use for that. We're going to show how we can easily put things into quarantine, put them on hold so we can't ship them anymore until we uh, identify the full extent of the problem. Uh, we will do a backward trace based on the customer information they gave us, find out uh, what ingredients were in there, hopefully identify the ingredient that is the cause of the problem, in which case we'll do a forward trace and make sure that we can capture all finished goods that ingredient might have been used in and all the customers that might have received product with that ingredient in. Why is that important? Because we're going to have to create a customer recall list. Um, the new FDA uh, uh, New Era Food Safety Blueprint that's out there uh, related to um, you know, some regulations in the food traceability list state that we have to generate all the data necessary to do a complete recall and submit it to the FDA in electronic fashion within 24 hours of notice. <clears throat> so when they call, we have to be able to get all this together very quickly so we can send it to them so that they can judge what the impact of the potential problem might be. <clears throat> Excuse me. In addition to that, we're going to set up uh, recall uh, call tasks in Sage CRM. Uh, what that does is then allows us to have our people start to contact the correct people at our customers, let them know what's going on, uh, what, uh, what the products are that are affected, the lock codes, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that's what we'll be working towards in this uh, whole scenario today. So um, that being said, you know, uh, basically we have food safety uh, out there that we need to worry about uh, as a statement by Margaret Hamburg that, uh, you know, effective food safety management systems are essential to the well-being of consumers, farmers, processors, and manufacturers. Uh, and it's required uh, in a number of different market, markets, but the main ones we're going to talk about today uh, in relation to what we're showing is food and beverage, cosmetics, nutraceuticals, uh, pharma and medical devices, chemical processing, and, and other things, uh, primarily process manufacturing, although the same principles in X3 could be applied to automotive, uh, um, uh, some discrete manufacturers with traceability requirements, version control, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, why do we do it? It's not because it's fun, that's for sure. Uh, we do it because of mandatory oversight. Uh, the government tells us we have to do it, whether it's the FDA, USDA, EPA, depending on our industry. Um, they all have standards and, and things we need to follow when it comes to uh, traceability, reporting back to them, et cetera. Today, we're going to mostly key in on the FDA and the new uh, regulations that are out there based on uh, what their requirements are. So 
In addition to government oversight, uh, we also have customer requirements. More and more customers, especially the large ones, are running their own mock recall scenarios with their vendors to make sure their vendors can easily find product that is a problem and let them know what it is so that they can get it off their shelves. That limit their exposure and they rely on us to be able to do that quickly. Um, there's also internal. Why do we do internal mock recalls? Because of the old adage, practice makes perfect. The more I do something, the better I get at it. So if I can do a bunch of uh, internal practice uh, recalls, uh, meeting my customer requirements and government oversight requirements, uh, it'll be that much easier to do it when I have to do it for them. I'll look better to them. It'll uh, solidify my relationship with my customers especially, and it will make the government feel comfortable that you know what you're doing. Uh, so the problem today is that so much of our work is done on paper that if even in a mock recall, internal, external, FDA audit, what have you, it takes so long to get everything together and it's so difficult and time consuming um, and costs too much money, so we just don't do it. So we're gonna show you how in X3 we can do all of that really quickly so that you can practice, practice, practice because practice makes perfect. So a uh, couple of things to talk about with lot control in X3, uh, you may know already, but in purchase order receiving, we can capture the supplier lot number as well as assign an internal lot number, or alternatively, we can use the supplier lot number as our lot number. Um, this makes it even easier than when I'm drilling down to a vendor supplied product that's an issue to know what that lot number is uh, that they assigned. Um, if we're doing it internally, we can manually assign them or we can auto generate them, a uh, number of different ways to do that. Um, under assembly orders or kit orders, same thing. I can take the materials that I've got a lot number on and capture that component lot number as I make the assembly. I can then assign a lot number so that I can trace it from one to the other up and down the chain. Um, manufacturing orders, same thing. Um, a little more complex here because we may have raw materials with a lot number that go into an interim item or a whip item that has its own lot number that may go into another whip item commingled with other ingredients, et cetera. Um, in X3, whatever the levels are, we can easily go from top to bottom and see them all on one screen and, and be able to drill into what's going on with each and every single one of them. So we'll show you some of that also. Um, outside of uh, what we're gonna talk about today, I did wanna talk about uh, our, our recall process steps that we've put together in Sage X3. Uh, first off, we now have corrective action, preventative action, and uh, higher releases of X3. This allows us to go ahead and assign some roles based on what you would do during corrective action uh, events, um, as well as uh, creating them and then putting a plan together and implementing that plan uh, so that if it, something happens, uh, we've captured what it is, we've mitigated the problem for the immediate problem for the customer or, or what the vendor has, uh, and then we've also gone ahead and put in place procedures and measures to make sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, well, then the next step would be uh, once I created that kappa to say that there's a non-conformance issue, I can place product on hold and I can start my lot traceability. And in the end, I can enable my recall process by identifying my customers, uh, putting together that all important electronic file we need to send to the government in case of a real recall and also setting up my call task to let customers know we have an issue and what it is and, and what they may have in their warehouse. <clears throat> As an overview, a corrective action, preventative action plan, start with either a purchase receipt, production tracking, or customer return. Any one of these events in X3 can generate a non-conformance issue. Uh, once I do that, I can, uh, once I have that non-conformance, it gets assigned to somebody and they go through the, the, the idea of uh, investigating what it is, putting a plan of action together, um, mitigate the circumstance for the customer, let's say if it was a customer one, and then also implementing the plan to make sure it doesn't happen again, and then eventually closing that out, okay? Um, under quarantine and traceability, once we know we might have a problem, we can go through and do a quality control request, which puts the product on hold, takes an active product, puts it on hold in my warehouse, so that I can't ship it anymore. I then do my quality test because I have an analysis request. I determine from that if the product has a problem. Um, and then from there, I can start my lot traceability, go, go backwards, find ingredients, do tests on those till I find out what's wrong, do a forward trace to find out where it's all used, put more product on hold, et cetera, et cetera. We'll go through this process in detail today. <clears throat> Finally, if we're actually gonna do a product recall, we can create our list and then go ahead and, and, and create our call list as well. So the electronic file will be generated. 
uh, that we can send out uh, to the FDA if required, and then also manage our calls so that we can uh, contact customers and let them know what's going on. We can do a, a campaign in X3 against those uh, individual customers that receive that product, uh, do an email campaign to notify them by email as well. <clears throat> so here's our scenario. We have a customer, Johnson Wholesale. They have bought some jalapeno bean dip in 24 eight ounce jars uh, with this lot number. They've had a number of customer complaints about a bad odor. They've gone out and pulled a couple of cases, opened them up, and yeah, this stuff smells rotten. So they called us and said, hey, we've got this product. Here's the information. Uh, should we, uh, we're pulling it off our shelves, but we wanted to let you know, let us know what to do with it. So we'd go ahead and start a corrective action plan, um, which we're not going to do here today. Uh, but instead, we're going to decide that, yes, okay, the first thing we want to do is if there's a problem with it, we're going to pull some. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll uh, do a demonstration now. We'll set up an analysis request <clears throat> so that our QC guys will go out and pull some product and take a test. And what the analysis request actually does is by putting in the product, putting in the lot, executing the command, I now get a list of that lot and all the locations it's at in the warehouse. So each one of these lines represents a separate location in the warehouse. I'm going to do a master selection of all places. And you notice my box fills in on the right then. So I found all the product in the warehouse that's in an active status, and I'm going to place it on hold. Okay. Once I do that, I can't ship it. I can't pick it. I can't do anything with it other than go pull samples and test it. So now that that's done, I need to find out what I need to do. So um, let's say I go pull a sample and I test it and I find out, yeah, it's Something's wrong with it. I don't know what. It smells bad. That's what the customer said. So the first thing I want to do is start looking at the ingredients that are in it. So what I can do there is I can take my customer originated trace. I do a backwards based on the product they gave us, the lot they gave us. And when I execute that, I can see some information immediately that comes up. First is I see the work orders that we made it on. So right there, I now know that these were work orders and that I must have some uh, drillable information in underneath. I can also see right away if the custom, what customers got this particular product. As you can see, <clears throat> the center line is Johnson Wholesale, who's the one who reported it. Cisco also got it, so we know we have at least one customer who's gotten this product. <clears throat> but now that I know what the product is and what the work orders are, <coughs> excuse me, I can start to drill into the work order components to find out what I need to test there. You can see as I open up each level, it shows me more and more ingredients. And I may pull grab samples or retention samples of the inner M items. I can see there's a number of them here uh, beginning in INT, as well as the raw materials that we use to make this. In this particular case, as I went through and tested all of my retention samples of all this different product, uh, I just have to go pull the lot, do my testing. And then once I find the problem, which happens to be this pinto bean, I now can drill in further and I can see that this pinto bean in this, this particular lot of this finished good had this lot number on the raw material <clears throat> and it came from this supplier. So the next thing I can do is I can call the supplier and say, hey, Mr. Supplier, I have a problem with your bean dip or with your beans. This is the lot number uh, that we got from you. Please check into it because uh, it looks like we have a problem and we're probably going to be shipping some beans back to you and going ahead and, and uh, doing some other things. The next step I would do on this is go back to my quality analysis, and I would take this bean with this lot number, and if I have any left in inventory, I would put it on hold. That way, I'm not going to use it in future production if I still have some of it around. From this standpoint, the next thing, though, I'm going to do is because I know this bean dip is a pro or this uh, particular bean is a problem and it's a raw material, I'm going to do a forward trace. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to put in my product. Now, this happens to be the raw bean product code along with the raw bean lot number. And when I execute this command, I can see I get a similar list out, except it's backwards. Instead of the finished good at the top going down to the raw beans, I have the raw beans at the top going down to the finished good. <coughs> Again, I can see that these are the three customers that we originally saw on the last screen with Johnson Wholesale in the middle that got these beans. But if I expand this screen further, I can see that not only was that bean used in the finished 301, but it was also used in finished 302, 303, and 304, which means that I have a lot more shipments out there of product that went to customers, uh, four different products now instead of one, 
um, that I'm going to have to go ahead and notify that there's a potential problem with these products at this point. So I've now gone from the customer with a single lot number down to the affected raw material back up to nine or 12 different customers that have gotten the product instead of the original three uh, that gotten product that had the offending uh, raw material in it. <clears throat> now that I have that list built out from the raw side, I do what's called a print summary or an Excel export, uh, which will give me two things. The first thing it'll give me is my electronic file with the data I need to send to the, to the uh, FDA to meet the requirements of the new era of food safety blueprint, okay, as well as generate my call list. So when I execute this command, uh, what you're going to see is I can get a, a nice spreadsheet out that has all the required information that I have to send to the uh, FDA. Uh, I can sort it down. I can consolidate it. I can get it into a format that looks a little nicer for what they actually want. Uh, so that's, that's easily done because now I have all that information in Excel. Uh, the second thing I do is I'm going to generate, uh, um, you can see I have all that information nice and highlighted across the top. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, go to my CRM system and look up my calls. And you can see I have calls to be executed over here. Um, and what they are is sorted down to an R1 category, which is my recall category. So all these were generated based on uh, some recall scenarios that we put into the system. And once I have those in here, what I can see is that I can see my customer, I can see the contact that I need to get a hold of at the customer. Typically, we set up a contact code for recall so that those are the ones that these are assigned to. So then I know who to call in the company. Um, I can go ahead and uh, uh, set up the date that it needs to be done. I can assign it to the right person, et cetera, and give it a priority level of high, medium, low, whatever. Um, but right here, I can see where my category comes into play with my food safety recall. And for additional information, I can set up a call script. So my people can actually open up a call script and have a, a way to talk to whoever's on the other end so they know uh, what to say, what not to say, how to say it, et cetera, along with the uh, basic information that's required for them to talk to them. You know, you got that uh, we have finished good 301 that we sold to you. This is a lot code uh, that came into you on this shipment number, et cetera, et cetera. And that way they'll have all the information they need to talk to the customer about what they should be doing uh, in relation to this uh, particular issue that's out there. So um, again, that's the end to end process, as you saw. We went ahead and uh, uh, found out that we had product out there that might have an issue. We put it on a quarantine hold so that we couldn't ship it any longer. We ran a backward trace so that we could find all the ingredients that went into this particular lot and uh, product code combination. We tested all of those and found the offending item that was a problem. From there, we took that offending item and we put it on hold so that we can't use that in production anymore. The next thing we did was a forward trace of that item which showed us that we had four products that were actually affected by that. And of those four products, we had a lot more customers we needed to uh, manage from the standpoint of letting them know what was going on. Um, and from there, we could generate our automatic recall list uh, in an electronic file format that we could go ahead and send to the FDA. And at the same time, we created the call list in our CRM system. So now we know who to call, what to talk to them about, and what the impact is across the whole system. Uh, this was all done very quickly here in about 20 minutes. Obviously, in your situation, it may take longer, uh, more data to sift through, et cetera, et cetera. But ultimately, you can see how using a system like this in Stage X3 will allow you to turn that around within the 24-hour requirement the government is going to mandate uh, as we go forward. So um, thanks for attending. Really hope you got something out of this. Uh, if you have any questions, you'd like to talk about this further, please join us for the recall automation workshop starting at 2.30, so just a few minutes from now. Take a break, uh, come on back, I'll be in the room there, and we can talk about what you've seen and uh, uh, answer any questions you may have. So thanks a lot, we will see you soon.